Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Board, Select Board. Um, first order of business uh, tonight. Um, the other day, we uh, we lost a uh, long member of our community. Um, and I'd just like to uh, acknowledge his passing. Dr. Russell Lane was a very active member in our community for many, many years, uh, including he um, had a flag made, donated the flag um, that he had for the town, Sunderland. Um, he Basically, I think he was on many different committees, including the uh, planning board 35 years ago. And if anybody ever wants to know someone that would dot the I's and cross the T's, on, you can ask Mr. Bob Doobie and Russ Crenshaw about Mr. Lane because he was very uh, specific about making sure that everything the commas were in the right places and the punctuation was a correct. So <clears throat> I just like to offer uh, condolences to Dr. Lane's family and uh, and I believe his uh, services will be on the 12th at Risley's. So the first order of business besides we will we'll talk about our November 15th minutes. Looking for a motion. Motion. Second. Okay, a motion made and seconded on the minutes of November 15th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Next up <clears throat> is the, uh, under new business, we have the elementary school capital improvement discussion. Okay, who's going to talk about that? I'm going to guess it's the gentleman in the upper left hand corner there on our screen. I'm in the middle of my screen. Oh yeah, there you go. You got okay, the center right, square. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, hello everyone. Gary Sebastian, the superintendent. Um, I, you know, I have to um, come tonight because we've been discussing our capital needs for the building um, with, for some of the elementary school. And um, we're starting to see that, you know, we're not catching up with the with our needs and the list keeps growing and at some point we're going to need some i guess you could say intervention of, of funds to um make up a difference so is, is it possible i can share my screen uh, do i i have that darius i can see it, share it too you want to put the spreadsheet up or something else well you know i have a i have uh, a uh yeah an updated well, one yeah you can do it so if I, so let me, uh, uh, I'm out of the, yes, I want to share this. Can folks see that? Yep. All right. So this Good is the, the document that was shared with you by Peter, um, you know, from the school committee. This is a, basically a try to create a very transparent, um, capital plan of what our needs, what we, what we've done and what we're working on and then what our needs are in the future. So right here you can kind of see, uh, I kind of see you should be able to see the, you know, in the grades what we've completed in recent years. We always, I always like to show that because I like to show that what we've worked on, what, what, what the systems are paid for, and also like sometimes people come up and say, didn't we just do that? Or was something like that we did last year? And also you, you know, under the notes you can see how it was funded. So, um, and looking over on the right, the year it was funded in. So you can kind of get an idea of what the town spent what year and how it's spent on the capital needs of the school. So right now, um, you know, the one thing that is in progress is the uh, rim band. We, we've broken that up over several phases um, in order to pay for it and not take up all the capital money in one year. <coughs> you know, that's still in progress. That meaning it hasn't been completed yet for this year, the phase two of that. Um, in the green, um, so what we also how we categorize priorities, you know, one of what we want to get done this year, 
twos are, you know, it's going to be coming in the not so distant future. In threes, we, we want to keep on the radar um, as they're coming up. And then from year to year, numbers can change based on a two may have been something that might be failing, um, and then it fails completely. Or, you know, as you can see, like, replace phone system. It's still working, but we're, we know we're going to have problems with it down the stretch, and that could easily come up. So this year in the green um, are, is what we, the administration has labeled as a priority. Um, and right now our PA system is not functioning. Um, that's a safety concern. Um, right now the glycol um, in the sprinkler system is the basically your, I guess it's uh, similar to, I guess, like a uh, radiator fluid, so to speak, in the sense that it's a non-corrosive substance that's in it has to be replaced every 10 years. Um, it wasn't on our list. They came to do the inspection that they do every year, and they said this year you're, you're, uh, you need to replace, uh, you know, after they did the testing, that you need to replace the, um, the glycol in the sprinkler system. So that was kind of a surprise for us. That probably should have been on this plan and kind of rotating every 10 years, but this plan has only uh, been in existence since I've taken over, so, you know, three years ago. Um, the, we are going at the phase three of the ring band around the outside school. As you know, we have rotting that's gotten behind the flashing um, throughout the of school. We've broken, broken that up into four phases. Uh, and then uh, we had a 30 year old dishwasher that keeps failing that um, has turned into a priority. Because when that goes down, um, you know, basically the kitchen goes down. Um, so those are what we have in green. And so, you know, why am I here tonight talking about it is that those alone are $60,000 worth of. Um, expenses. And then we look at the other, you know, the other ones that are coming um, is that we have a rotten gable vent trim around the, that's failing. Um, those of you who went on that, that tour we did a couple of years ago saw that. That's still one because, it's, you know, the building actually, you know, uh, fell apart. Um, but we have also had that oil tank inspection, spill protection, manhole entrance, it's kind of a, a complicated project um, with a oil tank gauge to, so that we can um, bring out a dipstick to do that all at once has been on our number one list for several years that we've been it, it, we've had a bigger priorities and the town has had bigger priorities and hasn't been able to fund them so you know looking at those together you're talking around eighty five thousand dollars and as we look into the not too distant future <clears throat> we have that window replacement project that is is, is 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 we've been talking about that for years now that's going to be, you know, close to a hundred thousand um, dollars. We're talking about AC being starting to put that in the uh, into the building. Um, you know, we talk about starting with possibly in the gym, maybe do a classroom rollout of that, um, and you, know, you can kind of just kind of as I go through the rest of the list isn't hasn't changed much. But the, the main difference between what Peter handed out is I did make sure what we didn't have in the notes was how um, things were. I want to know, you know, where, what we've paid in the last few years. So when I look at this and I say, okay, normally we go to the town, we ask to be put, you know, for extra money. What we can't do inside the budget, we ask for warrants. And so that's kind of been, kind of been the mode of kind of funding different things. It's getting to the point where we're not, we're losing every year and the list is getting longer. And I wanted to bring it to your attention because I'm wondering if the town has other facility projects um, and this is a, a, just one idea to throw against the wall and not the idea I'm running along with. Um, there's kind of other facilities projects that it wants to group together and possibly do a loan. Um, so, so where the loans are in your town, you're about to become debt free. Um, you know, that kind of planning where we can kind of tackle a lot of this and maybe something else, um, or maybe this alone, or do we look at a one time, very large warrant article? I don't know where, you know, where that money's coming from within the town's within the town's funding, but I wanted to put it on your radar because it's getting to a, a scope that's a little bit bigger than the school committee alone is going to have to handle. I think we have to work together. So that's my presentation and speech. I'll take questions and thoughts and so on. So, so Darius, um, w one question is is um, it, it, it's interesting that like the the sprinkler glycol um and, and i don't know if it has to be changed or not that's that's not the question the question is it's interesting to find that we didn't know that we needed to maintain that system 
So, so I, I, I guess. Right. We had it. We've we we we've uh, budgeted for the inspection annually. Yeah. Um, along the way, it never got onto our list that you should be expected, like changing your oil every ten years. You're going to have to drain your system and refill that stuff when it drops out of the pressure level or if the stuff deteriorates. I'm not that that. But you're right. It's a. So. It's, it's, you know, so so I I I. I Right now, I mean, we, we've we've expired a lot of our debt. We don't we don't have a lot of debt in town right now, and and if and uh, if we're talking about, you know, like the windows, uh, the windows would be an excellent idea. One one one, one thing um, that I, that I see on the list that that I I kind of wonder a little bit about was the uh, the um, the flooring the the cleaning of the uh the carpets i i kind of thought we had gotten rid of all the carpets um because of air quality issues um so we were we were supposed to get rid of all carpets and any upholstered seating that we had in the school that that we have a study by uh turner uh air quality people that they said that that should so i, I would wonder why we if we have carpets why we have carpets there um, but I, I think the idea about go in personally about looking at the school that that's now what 25 27 years old whatever the and and doing upgrades to it would probably make a lot of sense but tell you the truth I'd, I'd rather I, I would hope that you would either have the facilities manager do a complete top to bottom and understand the total scope versus a guesstimate for a scope. Does that make sense? Uh, kind of, in the sense that the scope of these projects, I mean, you went way down on the list there. Um, I'm looking just at the ones is more than we could ask over what we typically ask, and usually it's under $30,000 for one, you know, in, in our recent history. You know, it would take us just to get through some of these ones, you know, it's gonna take us three years. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm... That we've, already broke, we've already broken some of those projects up because we know the town can't afford them in single shots, such as, I mean, to do the rim band 10,000 at a time over five, is it five times, four times, five times? Um, you know, we're doing that just for financial reasons, not because it's the best way to do the job. Well, uh, and... You know, and, so, and, and, and you want a full 10-year... I mean, you have a building, we have a building, um, that, you know, it's wind construction, and it's it's got a lot of use on it already oh, and no. a lot of areas are failing on it so if you wanted to get a comprehensive this is what we have right now which is you know looking ahead probably five years yep you know i i what, I, what I, I would i don't know i i would i would like i'd like to know exactly what needs to be done you know i was i was at the school last friday getting a vaccination booster okay and I was looking at the uh, the um, pavement going into it, and, it, and there, you know there was cracks and there was dips and and there was bumps and bruises in the pavement. So so I would I would like to understand. That being said, I also understand that when we get to a certain dollar, when we get certain dollar value, that we trigger certain requirements by the state. So I would I would but I would say started the conversation but I said we have retired a lot of our debt over the last few years we have we have the capacity to, to talk to our town the, 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 the citizens of our town and say hey look this is this is going to set the, the school up for another 15 years or 20 pick a number um, and and I, I don't think that if you keep coming back every every year and ask for another 50,000 for this or 30,000 for this it's much harder than to try to do this stuff all together and say, okay, this is what we need. This is this is what we make need to make the school. So I, I just think that we need to look at a, a complete list of what needs to be done to bring the school into a safe, efficient, um, well-maintained <coughs> possession that the town puts forward to its uh, pupils. I, I and I, I'd rather do it that way. 
and then 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 if we have to say we have to borrow two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make that happen, then we can do that and do it once instead of keep coming back. Because what happened with deferred? What happens with? In my opinion, what happens with deferred maintenance? You never get around to the deferred maintenance, so you just you're just you're just putting it off. So so I, when I look at this, if you if you have if you have rotten areas of wood right now, those have to be addressed now. They can't be waiting three or four or five years because by the time you get to them, you're going to cause more problems. So that's just my opinion. You got a question there, Mister? Yeah. Greg? Uh, so first, I, I do want to thank uh, Darius and the administration for, for doing what school committee essentially asked, which is to, to compile a running list that's prioritized <clears throat> along with a previous track record so we can see how big the current wish list is, whether the total dollar amount is going up or down. And I think we're seeing that that's, that's useful data already uh, to the question of, well, uh, why don't we know that we have to replace the glycol every 10 years. I think if we maintain this list, we're gonna have that kind of cyclical stuff. So it feels like an improvement over where things have been. Tom, if I hear you correctly, I hear you saying, uh, well, if we're gonna have to go to the town for something like this, go ahead and make the list as long as it needs to be to justify, uh, you know, what we know we need to do in the relatively near term. Is that correct? Correct. You know, and, 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 and again, you know, I, I see it looks like you are talking about adding AC, AC for the gymnasium. And, 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 I, would, and I would say there, there's a lot of reasons why that, that, that's something that we really should consider. A, that it, if, if, if we ever had a problem with, with uh, a widespread power outage, that, that area is a, a place that we could have available to, to house people in the community that may need emergency housing in, in, in the summer months and that happens so also that pe when we go when we go to have a, an annual town meeting okay it's not on it it's it has not been unheard of where it gets it, so hot and humid in there that that it's very uncomfortable to have so th those are something that we can sell to the, to, to the town but we should do it we should do it once and instead of continually and you know keep going back every every two years and asking for more and you guys have it i mean for the most part the schools hasn't come but but to tell you the truth when i when i walk into the school i want i want the school to look nice and look like it's maintained versus not being maintained and 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 that and 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 at the same time i i, I do want to look at if there's carpeting in there i really want to talk about carpeting because I, I went through that roof collapsing and I went through staff complaining about air quality and the air quality came back to upholstered chairs and carpet and that's why there was no carpeting in that building. That was all carpet was removed and we put the tile. I hate to see us going back to have issues with air quality that can be directly related back to carpet um, and upholstered chairs. Um, and, 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 you know, going forward, after we you know the the Michelin the the painting we should put that that painting should be on the schedule we used to paint the outside of the building every year there was a x amount of dollars put in the built budget that every year we would do one one side north south east to west of the of the because it used to be a uh, wood siding so i just think we have to go back to that and do programmatic maintenance um and not allow not allow things to be deferred and I know it's difficult, but but really to maintain stuff, you have to do it on a regular scheduled basis. My opinion. So I hear you, and and it's it, it gets into that very difficult area of yep. you know deferred maintenance versus budgets, right? And so I mean, I'm looking at a trim pack, uh, the trim which was agreed upon by the capital planning committee that should be done over five sessions you know, for $10,000 a piece, when you're just talking about, well, you're, de you're deferring the maintenance, well, deferring the maintenance, because it's the way the costs are. Yep. And I understand your idea. I guess before, you know, if we're gonna go out and create a comprehensive um, 
renovation plan. So that's basically what you're talking about. You're going to start talking about changing the sidewalks where the, you know, or it can get heaves over time or, you know, handicap accessible, you know, we would have done the handicap report, um, accessibility report rather that we had. Um, looking at the parking lot, you know, when did that have to be redone? Looking at that roof, when did that have to be redone? I mean, so, so there's forever going to be ongoing capital needs of a building that size. The building with that amount of use. You know, but, you know, we can look at what projects we want to do. I mean, you know, you want to AC the building as part of something like that. Or do you want to AC part of it? If you want to AC part of it, then you don't want to AC the other half of it some other time. Um, you know, so it's like that, that number could grow to multi millions very quickly. And, it, and not even clear, not even near exaggeration, you know? Um, and that's not, you know, so we can come with a more comprehensive plan about what's on our ones and two list, you know, um, and bring that forward. But I really also, I don't want to drag our feet trying to, to make sure that we have every possibility taken care of. And then meanwhile, we defer maintenance for another couple of years. Yeah, you know, and then one of the, and then you know, that, I mean, cause our, the, some of our those ones have to get done this year, and so as I see these ones start to list up, and you're like, you know, we're gonna start taking on liability from fire liability to safety liability. So that's how things get on those number one list: safety first, and then programmatic problems where we can't do what we want to do in the classroom. And so I, I guess I'm also asking, like, how do we do this as a town? Yeah, you know, does a does a school propose? And then it goes back and forth to where do we come together and say, you know, this is where, you know, the amount of money we should be looking for, you know, we, you know, so our frontier is what we did. So we, 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 with that bigger, the bigger project is we got all together, we made a list, then we said, you know what, the original list was 3.8 million, okay, or 3.4 million, something like that. And we said, there's no way the town can afford it. So then we had to weed down the list to get the essentials to what has to get done at frontier. And we went out and got a loan on that and went to the town, as you guys all know, and we started that here you know i want to listen you know talk about the same kind of like what i don't want to do is school versus town so to speak like it's, it's, it's the town one of the town's main buildings it's one of the biggest you know services it provides to the citizens and so you know i want to make sure we're on the same page of like how do we want to get there and you're saying there is you're barking up the wrong tree to go after a loan why don't you get a you know more refined system to go after you know foreign articles or find grants or you know that kind of stuff or do we go the other opposite route and we say okay do we get try to be part of the msba you know that's the building authority for those windows you know there's i you know i get different feedback from different towns on how to fund different things but I, the reason i'm here tonight is i want to be talking with the people that are in charge um about how do we do this and is it a priority or you know to look at a lump sum kind of way of addressing this or or it did not, and we, you know, we continue to figure out, try to find other ways. Because I don't know the full financial forecast of the town either. I don't know if we have, you know, you know, I, I you know, I hear little information, but here and there, um, and so you know, it's hard for me to apply that without, you know, your 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 thoughts and support ultimately. One of the areas, one of the things I'd love you to do, I'd love you to to sit down with our town administrator. You're you're the first education person in, in the administration I ever heard say I, I don't understand what the town's financial outlook is I those are music that's music to my ears because that 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 by sitting down with Jeff and the other three town administrators and and and, and you can we, we've tried in the past to, to but most of the time people only look at the expense side of a budget they never look at the revenue side and and that that is such a difficult thing because because true to look at and, and you know because you have you have to do a revenue as it as a superintendent you have to do the revenue and the expenditure side um a lot of times people only look at the expenditure side of a budget and and i i would say that i I personally, if you, Jeff, I'm sure would sit down with you and and you could talk about that. That and and that's good, a, a good background information to have to, to to where we are financially. Okay, do we have uh, excess levy capacity? You know, and, and I know I know I can find that, but I don't I don't know 
I know Peter Gagarin can find it, but I don't know if a lot of other school committee members or residents of town understand what excess levy capacity is or if we have it, you know. So those are, those are good things to talk about. So I, I would invite you to, to talk to Jeff um, and, and, and he could help, help with that. But, but I also think that, that you're absolutely right about when you look at, when you look at we rebuilt 21, 20, about 20 years ago, the, uh, the Sunland Elementary School and after it fell down, and it was like $4.1 million, give or take a million. Um, and, and 20 years ago, that $4.1 million was a, was a lot of money. It's less than it is now. But I think the residents understand that you have to maintain, you have to maintain that building. If you want that building to last, it has to be maintained. So I, 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 don't have a problem sitting down and start discussing this and and understanding what what the total cost is well I think the list is always going to be an ongoing running list I mean you can't tackle it all in one chunk and walk away there's going to be an on you can certainly break it out into maybe we look at financing some large things like the windows and things like that but we need to take a programmatic list like approach to the rest of it because every year essentially there's going to be something new that well, gets paint, old painting, enough to painting the hall, and and that's something we have we have to discuss. Painting the hallways, is that uh -huh. is that maintenance? Should that be in part of the budget, or should it be? And, and again, that's a discussion to have. Should or is that it's, it's is one that of those things? It's one of those gray like painting is one of those gray area things where like okay, if I painted everything I needed to paint, does that put me over the you know the the amount that I've got a you know the capital amount? It's that is one of those tough ones because it's it's yeah, longer but if you don't term paint, what maintenance. Happens? You know what I mean? Well, you you do have to paint. You got to paint. Yep. It's so, but, but know, is that part of the budget? Maybe painting goes into it. You know, you kind of have to look at like bigger. You know, it's kind of like you know, Darius. Like you know, you're looking at like the, like you've done up at Frontier. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think you can tackle some of it through. You know, like the, a loan or in whatever. In the budget, it, right. But, but like $100,000 for, for windows. Well, I would probably talk to Eversource and, and and see what type of energy rebates are available. Yeah, there's a lot of... Well, <laughs> windows are windows historically are, are poor return. Well, it's your lowest return item, yeah. right, for efficiency. But there could be other... But you got high efficiency, you know, replacing motors for high efficiency motors. Right. Well, they're, they're going to give you... You get more bang for your buck. You're there. you're gonna you're gonna get money for efficient for for uh, motor motor replacement, right? Wouldn't you say so, Crystal? You're I you're in that business. I would. But like the windows, is that a, a mechanical pro issue or is it an efficiency issue? You know what I mean? Like that's the kind of things you got to look at. You know, because I know like some of the windows at Frontier when where where the um, the seal essentially breaks in the double pane, then you start getting condensation yeah. in there. And you basically hey, have to pull it hey, out and replace hey, it. Hey, Peter. Do you, Peter Gagarin, did we did we did did we replace the north the north windows and not the south windows? I thought we did one, not the other, right? You only did you only did half during the rebuild and around 05. I think that was the north side. Are are you Darius? Are you talking about doing all of the windows? No, just the half that wasn't done. Yeah. See, and, and now that that we that we know. We knew the town. The town knew twenty years ago. I mean, I, I think we're we're got nineteen and a half more years life out of those windows than we thought we were going to get. That half, I think. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And, and, and they, they will continue to be put on the back burner when you have issues. You know, and you talk about you know painting. Is that in the maintenance budget? Why isn't it in the maintenance budget? Well, it is. Until the dishwasher breaks down and it costs four grand to fix it. Now, right. Jamie just got moved out of the budget because we had to fix the dishwasher. Yep, and that's going to happen. That's what happens year in and year out. Or yep. we have to cut. We have to cut. If, you know, um, in order to make budget, uh, we have to reduce. You know, so we, you know, right. I know that's get know, dropped. We things at a different spot, and that's what happens. Understood. 
I mean, maybe we look at financing a chunk for capital each year as part I, of the budget. Do you know what I mean? Peter, have you guys looked at capital uh, at at what you would ask for a capital budget if you if we were talked to look at financing it? Well, I I just know that um, obviously, particularly the last couple of years, uh, the, it's not just the school that is it, it's short of capital financing going on here. It's the whole town. Uh, there's been no way we've been able to uh, deal with all the things that we should be dealing with, and. That's given the fact that the school isn't even submitting stuff that it should be submitting because, like Darius said, if he, you know, if he, he could easily submit seventy-five or hundred thousand each year, and there's no way that the town's current, you know, capital financing structure is going to come anywhere close to that. So, um, you know, I think part of Darius said, you know, the point here is, you know, the starting point is basically the school building, okay, it's owned by the town, it's part of the town, it's the largest building by far in the town, um, it's the most expensive building in the town, and we don't want to be in a situation where it just, okay, so the school takes care of it, and then, you know, at some point comes to the Board of Selectmen, but the Board of Selectmen, or the Select Board, excuse me, isn't really involved in, you know, a lot of the thinking and decision making and so on about how we're taking care of that building, because it's in all of our interests to do it as, you know, as well as we can. So, you know, that's the point of coming here this evening. That's the point of, you know, having, I, I look at the, what they did at Frontier where there was ongoing, um, you know, with members of the school committee and of the boards of selectmen from each town. And I think that's, you know, a good example of how we ought to be doing this because it's, you know, you say, well, the school, you should take this out of your budget, but then, you know, we, when we come to budget time, we've got obvious, very, you know, strict limitations on what we can afford in the budget, and this is based on, you know, overall town finances. Um, you know, I, uh, part of me says that we ought to be looking to see where we, or how we can figure out a way to enable a larger amount for capital spending for the town as a whole each year, okay, because that's where we're really short. I look at the numbers that are going into our capital budget and it's not enough to it'd be anywhere near sustainable on a, any sort of long-term basis. And that's just, that's for the whole town. That's just, not just for the school, but obviously it's very true for the school. Um, you know, Darius's list, we keep, if, if all we're doing is knocking off the top 30 or 40,000 each year, that list is just gonna get longer and longer. And then, you know, more problems are gonna crop up. And um, so what I'm hoping is that you know, there'll be active involvement with Jeff and with your board as we go through here and try to figure out what the best is of the various options for taking care of this. And, you know, whether the option is a loan or whether the option is, uh, you know, dealing with stuff at the tax levy or whether the option is, uh, you know, figuring out some combination of these things, including whether there's money available from, from the ARPA money that we're getting that could be used in these capital needs or, um, you know, at some point down the road, if we have a successful uh, cannabis program in town and maybe take and say, well, boy, if that money could just be set aside for capital each year, think how good that would be for the town. Um, these sorts of ideas have got to be reached, uh, you know, with some sort of consensus among all the parties here. And that means continually, you know, you guys being involved in a lot of this you know, discussion and decision making. It's not just, well, the school does it, up to the school, and then we're here to say yay or nay. Um, I'm just hoping that we can get your involvement in this that, you know, would seem to me to give us a better chance to work in something out like Frontier did. I agree. I, my, my, the one thing I would say in, is that I, to, to be able to have a, you, 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 to, to do it right, I think you, you you actually have to you have to identify how much you have you're going to need per year to maintain. So you're going to look at what the and 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 so and and you said seventy five to hundred thousand dollars a year to maintain. Okay. So I said that could easily that well, could I'm, easily be come forward on the existing yeah. projects on the list. But then there's not stuff, I mean, like the parking lot, you know, and all the pavement's not on the list. The roof is not on the list. Right. Um, right. So the really long term, that still doesn't do it. And, 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 but you have to, 
and you what what we have we have a um debt exclusion for capital projects or you know right. that that we that we use right so right, right now i think it's 200,000 uh That's depending right. on your vote tonight it might be 120 okay 120 100 so so you identify what it's going to cost to maintain the school after it's it, it, how much is going to be needed typically what's going to be needed for the school and you, and 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 you have an, you vote that override and say okay that money is going to be set aside that i'm going to say a hundred thousand dollars and it's pure fabrication on my part but you're going to have a hundred thousand dollars a year go into main the main maintenance of the school i like that idea because guess what the school can't use it to put by a teacher or an aide or whatever it has to be used for capital expenditures so so i like that we so so it's you're designating money and it and it's being it's going to be used for that that reason so but but you have to and, and so you have to so if we can identify how much that that's one area how we start to to look at the long-term maintenance of the building that's one way we can start looking at at that and and right now we use we use capital that capital um fund we use that for the school the entire town right now and you're right it does it's not enough it's not even close we know that um but we we thought it was a good start to get to get that to get that there so it's a it's a start but maybe that's what we need to do maybe we need to do, I, I i designate that just for the school you know or or a portion of it and we can do that but so yeah i i it, i peter if you guys if you guys want to have um of that that discussion and darius if you want to have that discussion you want you want us to be more involved with that that's fine i i, I it is that's our big that is a town asset the board um i would i regina nash the old superintendent i didn't see her smile a lot but one one time i did see her smile a lot is when the school roof came down and we told her that it was a town building that we were that we were t the people in charge and she gave a big smile and just said you got it guys <laughs> you just made my day because and and, and it was it, it but it was a town it was a town responsibility so yeah i agree we can do that we can help. Because I think, I think just to reiterate, I think that, you know, town-wide, we don't allocate enough money for our capital needs. Nope, not yet. Okay. The school is obviously a significant part of that, but it's, it's a town-wide problem. And the 120 now we're getting for the, for the capital uh, levy that we have in the budget each year, you know, that should be 100000 higher. I'm just pulling, you know, that's a rough number, but that would at least get you feeling like, yeah, we can, we can do a better job with handling the stuff that's coming at us each year. Yeah, that's really just like seed money, honestly, in terms of our actual it's, it's needs. Only, it's only for capital. It's, you know, I mean, right. the nice thing, like Tom says, is that if you've got money segregated for capital spending, that's where it's got to go. Because right. that's, you know, have to force yourself to do the right things to take care of your infrastructure. It's a it's a national problem. It's not even just a town problem. I mean, you look at the infrastructure we built. We passed the reason we had to pass it is because we don't maintain our infrastructure. You know, we're great at building stuff, and then we let it fall apart. You know. And, and but you know, Peter, you said a hundred thousand dollars easily, and I think that from my perspective, and I'm happy to be corrected. You know as high a number as we can get away with because at least since i've been here we've spent the capital uh, allotment every year the, the full amount if not more oh, yeah. and and so if you can actually levy more than you're using that's a good thing so in a year you know when we have a seventy five thousand dollar radio replacement that we hadn't you know or we have what, uh, a loader that George is going to need in two years, and that's a quarter of a million dollars. We have a little bit built up over some time. Um, 
So maybe that it, it's time to look at, at that number, and that's not going to be the only solution um, given the needs. I think at the school we have to look at our we have to look at all the potential options. Right. Um, There's no but magic I think bullet. That You're right. We got to look at that. That's part of the yeah. Yep. But but Tom, anyway, I mean, part of the reason for 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 coming here this evening was that you know, in order to do something, you got to keep it visible, the problem visible. You got to keep it in front of you. You can't just sort of like, you know, oh, sorry, we don't have time to talk about that tonight, which is often what happens to things that are you know, capital things, and you put them off, and then the year goes by, and you're another year behind. And so um, what I'm hoping on and what I, you know, intend to push from our direction is we keep this front and center as we go through this whole budget cycle. Mm -hmm. And we talk about, you know, we spend some serious time talking about, okay, which of the various options do we want to take in terms of, you know, how we could generate more capital funds available for our capital needs. And, and I think the list is a great start. I think, you know, it's kind of amazing that we didn't have this in the past you know what I mean I mean we need something like this because this helps you keep it front and center you know because you can say well I've got a list right here of all the stuff we got to do and what we've done so I think this is a great start and, and to tell you I don't see anything on your list except for the carpet cleaning <laughs> that that I would disagree with um, that, that looks like maintenance that would have to be done on a building of that age, that vintage. It, it's in, in the windows, unfortunately, yeah, we, we knew they were bad 20 years ago when, when that roof fell down. They, so I, that's, we got 19 and a half more years out of them than I ever thought we would get, so. And I think a lot of people don't know that or don't remember it too, you know. Well, that's why I wanted to ask Peter because I, 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 I would, I didn't want to just say why, we did, and but I, I lived it unfortunately, and I remember having that discussions about the windows, yeah. and and they were just marginally okay. The the south side were marginally okay at that time. The north side had to be replaced, and they were marginally okay. So, because I remember part of the staff complaining, well, we don't, why don't we, you know replace them all just we didn't have the finances so but if you can replace the windows for a hundred thousand dollars you're doing good Darius to tell you the truth yeah they're expensive well I mean that's a number that's already five years old so, so I guess <laughs> yeah. my, I guess where I need direction is that so you know I'm looking at these are problems that we're not we're not solving this problem with the current setup and I guess that's where I really kind of I guess that's the, the point of my message tonight is that we have capital needs that we did not, our budget is not set with capital in it. The school budget isn't, has not been developed that way, where we have capital funds that we can do these kind of projects year in and year out. So either we, you know, if we're gonna talk about restructuring how we budget things, but I'm also looking at the town, I don't know what the town does for its capital planning. Is there a master capital list? And is the school's materials on that capital master list you know, what's needed in the garage, what's needed in the school, and are they side by side as they go through that list each year? They're, they're, and and, I, and I'm, listening, I'm listening to changing the funding and about the amount of money you may have to switch to, you know, emphasize, you know, capital, that's that's fine. That's, you know, I play a role in that, but that's more on your folks' plate and how that how you how you facilitate that. But I guess my question, my statement tonight is really is that the system in which we need to address these capital needs is broken right now in the sense that we're not going to be able to address these needs given the current way we do things. Yep. You know, the, 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 I, I apply for three every year, I get one, and if I look at this list, I'm not going to get all, I'm not going to get all, you know, of the, of the ones that are in green for 60000 you know, and so I have to start looking at it like how do we do these things before we start getting ourselves where the building is in worse shape, where we start having safety issues that are, you know, that get us into other kind of financial problems. And so that's where I really want to bring your attention about how do we look at this as a town and then our role within the town. Yep. So, and it, it means that the answer I didn't expect to have tonight, but it was just starting the conversation. But. Yeah, because we do have a master capitalist, but I don't know if we actually have the school stuff on that, do we? And I think that brings up actually a very valid point because right now it's kind of like, oh, that's the school's problem. And it's really our problem. 
because it's a municipal building just like this building that we're sitting in. And I, I think you're right about that. I think, I think we need to look at overall how we're looking at it because we do have a capitalist, but I don't think we've had the school on there traditionally. And I think maybe that begs the question, maybe we're looking at that wrong, you know, and we need to add that in and fold that in because it's, I mean, how is it any different than the town garage or this building, right? Right, and, and, and that we need this has grown. You know, there's right. the numbers of those. You know, when you have a new building, the first 10 years, you know, you're replacing this, you're replacing that. But they're small numbers, and so and then every now and then we need 20,000 for something else, and so it works. But now that we're in a you know 25-year-old building or whatever the exact number is, it, you know, it's getting up there. The, the, it, it, it was increased. So now and we didn't build the budget. The state of school has to take care of it. We didn't build the budget. Again, I know I'm repeating myself there, but we didn't build the budget with capital, uh, you know, savings and capital each year. We haven't been yeah. putting money aside. Everything's been going into operations. So, you know, to say that we should have done that. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. at this point. Yeah. So, How old right. is the and actual building? It also gives the town some control over its facilities, too, in this process that we have. It's that the school's not alone when, in dealing with its building and helping prioritize with the needs of the town. So. Because it was, it was rebuilt 20 some odd years ago when we had the roof collapse. But when was it actually built? Mm -hmm. I, I think it was right about 1990. 90? Okay. And I think, to, to be fair, when I look at it, it's probably, you know, we probably went through the same thing and how we ended up with some of the stuff with our town garage. We probably didn't want to spend as much money on it to put in longer lasting materials. And this is where we had, uh, where we're replacing rim boards, and we've got siding on there. You know, it's you know. Like, that stuff also took thirty years, and it's done. Right. And uh, no yes. matter, you know, it's whatever. There's a lot of stuff in that building that is original issue and yep. getting older and older. Yeah. Yep. Well, I know one thing: the roof is all new. <laughs> yeah. All the all, all the all the wood, all, every, every, every that's all new. So, and is it still new? Oh huh? well, well, do you still call it new? I was going to say years, it's, twenty years well, old. 20, well, twenty years for for wood construction. That's not. We probably only have about ten years left on the asphalt, right? When you think about that, because we did, did that like twenty or so years ago. That probably yeah, we, wasn't. Yeah, we didn't we didn't skimp on the on the shingles. Yeah. Good point. Good. Yeah, it will cost you a couple million in 10 years. Yep. I don't know if I'll be here to see that through. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. All right. All right. We got to start the discussion. You're right. You know? But we, we I, I, but I, I it, it would be, it would be interesting. It's not an exercise, it, but it, it, it's, it's important to, to learn what your facility manager thinks it would cost per year to maintain. Does that make sense, Darius? To, to, to get an understanding of what, what they, and, and, and I'm not talking about replacing a roof, but I'm talking about painting, flooring, the normal upkeep that you'd have to do on a building. Right, I mean, that, and that makes sense, right? right. It's, it's when you have bumps in the system, you know, you know, that, Anticipated costs that are outside of that maintenance. Yeah, I think we have. I think we. I think what we have to do right now is you got. Is we got two. We we're, we're we need to work two 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 problems right now. So a to catch up from where a the first problem is to catch up, and the other is to put in place a budget going forward for maintenance and capital on that building. So you're really looking at two two separate two separate issues. I think. Well, and your maintenance stuff, like painting, that's a good example. You're not going to do that every year. You probably do it every, I don't know, three to five, depending on what it is. So you well, kind of have like a short term, I, an annual, then a see. And I don't, I don't know if I, budget. I don't know if I'd agree with that. With I, I and, and I may agree with it, Dave. But you know what? We, like I said, what we did before is that we did the the we painted the outside of the school on a on a every twenty five. We did twenty five percent of the the building every right. year. So what's it? What's be, what's better to to put your school on put the school on a five year rotation for painting? So and and again, 
say, okay, we're going to paint one twentieth or twenty percent of the school every year is going to get new paint. Right. You know, that is that that's better than trying to do the whole school painting at one time. Well, from a financial perspective, yeah. Right, but then, but once you start it, but you have it's a discipline. You have to. It has to be discipline. You have to do that, and and people have to remember. Oh, I agree. But like you know, to his point too, you know, we have like a bad budget year. Yeah, everything's out the window. You know, then you have to put it off and wait. But not not if, not if we not if we have money dedicated in a well that will help a capital a, a capital, a, you know. <clears throat> It'll help part of it. Correct. Okay. Darius, what else do you want to tell us? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, I thought you may have had some good news for us. Darius, oh, I, good news? Darius I, had, I, had the, uh, I had the privilege of uh, being in Frontier the other day for uh, some pool testing of the, for, with the MRC. You got, quite, you got quite a staff there, and, and there was... And I just wish every should see some of the kids. I and I was absolutely amazed. I, you know, kids were saying thank you to us for giving them a thing so they could swab their noses. I, I, it, it, I, I, I just thought that I, people don't realize sometimes. Sometimes we don't realize that that generation that's coming up is a pretty special generation, and and things change, but. There's there's some good parenting out there, and they're you know they they still say please and thank you, and and sometimes we don't get to see that. So I just wanted to tell you that I appreciated spending a little bit of time, and I I thought you have some very dedicated staff members here. I I think they are going to recommend a warrant article, and it the I think the. The last discussion was just to add Juneteenth to the list. There's been some talk about potentially just changing it from a list to all state approved holidays relevant to Sunderland so that Bunker Hill Day, for example, um, which is not that, celebrated that's by a, Boston. That's a Middlesex County, right? Yeah, yes. that's right. That's so, the, so that there's no confusion. It would just be... I, I think that's probably a cleaner way to do it. Um, you don't have to keep run. changing the names. Exactly. It's so, uh, right. Columbus Day becomes Indigenous People's right. Day, things like that. List. You go by mm -hmm. that makes the it state easier list. for everybody. Yeah. You okay with that? I'm good with it. Yeah. David? Yep. All right. All right, so I'll entertain a motion right now to. So this is the holiday schedule as presented Martin Luther King Day. Junior Day, January 18th, President's Day, February 15th, Patriots Day, the third Monday in April, Memorial Day is the last Monday in May, Independence Day, July 4th, Labor Day is the first Monday in September, Columbus Day is the second Monday in October, Veterans Day is November 11th, Thanksgiving Day is the fourth Thursday in November, Christmas Day, December 25th, and New Year's Day, January 1st. We motion. actually had this conversation in the Furcock. About Juneteenth? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, we did. And, and about names of holidays. Yeah. Pretty lengthy discussion about yeah. names. What, what things are called. So. Okay. So we have, uh, do I hear a motion? Motion. I second. And we have a motion made and seconded to, uh, to accept the 20... <coughs> 22 holiday schedule as presented at this time. All those in favor, signify it by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, we got three zero on that. Before we move on, I just want to clarify that that's without Juneteenth. So after, if the bylaw changes, I was very careful not to say Juneteenth in there. Okay. I just wanted to double that's check. Why we got, that's why we got FCAT taping back so we there. Will, we will come back. We if the bylaw changes, we can't. We shouldn't supersede the bylaw. Right. right. Not yet. Right. Personnel committee. I'll agree with you. Yep. We don't want to overassume authority. Yep. Oh, absolutely. They'd be trying to think that we're trying to make a coup of this town. Coup d'état. All right.
You want to skip unpaid sewer charges? Yes, please. That one name I showed you, mm -hmm. Crystal found the uh, obituary online. Okay. Thank yeah. you. We'll make sure it gets sent to the right person. Okay. FY23 capital assessment. Yes. Speaking so yeah. we were we were talking about this um, annually. Uh, the capital assessment can increase by up to two and a half percent. Last year, the capital assessment was one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars. Uh, two and a half percent increase would be two thousand nine hundred seventy one dollars, bringing the it should the select board choose to do the full two and a half percent increase. Uh, the fiscal year 23 capital assessment would be $121,840. I think it's, uh, Did, we just discussed about not having enough money for capital. Right. Does it, I mean, I, I, you can vote that now and if yeah. there's a recommendation from the capital planning committee to. No. We, yeah. Motion. You, Second. Motion made. No to increase by two and a half the uh, capital assessment for FY23. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tree zero, Jeff. Thank you. <clears throat> um, you want to talk about ARPA? Yes. So. We had, uh, I think, three or four residents um, respond. Last time we talked about it, you said we wanted to yep. put it out there. Um, th there were there were s some suggestions. Uh, most, if not all, of the suggestions were would would fall under the revenue replacement funds, which are the more I was going to say more limited. The the lesser amount of funds, but the more flexible funds. Yep. Um, and so I did it. I put together a spreadsheet, and we have about three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars in revenue replacement funds, and about seven hundred and forty thousand in non-revenue replacement funds. Um, and again, the the majority of projects that that either the town came up with or residents were revenue replacement funds. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the suggestions from residents were uh, infrastructure related, building sidewalks, um, some specific suggestions, for example, that it was not revenue replacement from a resident was give every resident a hundred dollars to spend locally like a, a Sunderland gift card to spend at the businesses to help both the businesses and residents um, there was improving communications um, stockpiling PPE HVAC upgrades for town buildings which I think has is somewhat related to the air conditioning in the schools, schools yeah um, the list included some of the things on the school's capital list, windows, um, glycol replacement, um, I think the, the intercom that, that the intercom, was yeah, mentioned. I that. Um, so I, I think that, I, I guess one of my challenges is I, I I'm not sure <laughs> how to manage these funds and make sure that we're accurate, doing a good job and doing what we're supposed to do with them. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we could use the funds to, it would be to hire a person <laughs> or a part-time person or share a person who would go through and say, yeah, this is an eligible expenditure. This is how you report on it. Um, so, so can you, can I, again, I've, I've talked to other members of uh, select boards and, and that seems to be a common concern. Have you talked to area towns to see if there'd be a, if, a, if you could create a job description and a, a, a cost sharing mechanism for that position? Yes, what, what I found is 
um, I think so, some towns are looking to hire a more permanent position, I think, and, and make this part of that position. But I think that there are there are some towns that would be interested in a shared part-time per person or splitting a, a full-time person amongst towns. I think that the, the other challenge is it's a totally new program. So it's not like there's anybody with experience or expertise in doing this. They, they might have general experience with federal grants and reporting on them, but um, finding, a quali finding a qualified person might, might be more challenging than you yeah. might expect. That, that's why that's why I think that to be better off instead of trying to stumble and trying to hire a person, you'd be able to you'd be able to offer a more competitive salary with <coughs> hours if you would if you looked at sharing a position. Yep. That position. I, I, I you know, okay, you're gonna hire somebody for twenty hours. We've tried that. We we know what happens when we when we try to hire part sometimes they if you're fortunate and you're work looking like at some of our positions where you can and it, but a lot of times those positions you hire a building inspector, for instance, but the building inspector also is a building inspector in other towns. Right. Yep. Right. Plus, how long does this last? The Through the end of 2024. 24. 24. Yeah. So it's it, yeah. So there's the challenge too that it's not a permanent. It's a temporary permanent yeah. job. Right. Right. Getting somebody on that. But I think that trying to do it sooner rather than later will help yeah, us I agree. think yep. through this. So, um, why don't you why not you, you look at why you look at what 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 we can do? Okay. How about you get a couple more weeks, come with a plan for that position. Okay. Okay. I'm sure we could come up with other uses for a share of resource too. Right. Between the Absolutely. towns after this goes out. Yeah, I think they're talking about you know, potentially helping just in general with grants, right? Right. Right. So, uh, just so about grants. I yep. I talked about potentially yes, um, getting somebody to to help with grants in general, and I think um, that's. I'm working on that too. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes um, sense because more of our survival relies on grants now than it ever has and it's increasing and so that's Absolutely. really become a funding mechanism at the state and federal level rather than the way it used to be right so yeah. right now today the focus might be on arpa stuff but yeah, it could be something else two down years the down the road it could be on something else grant wise right. like we get complete streets that's all grant really yeah, yeah. So. And I guess the only other question that I had is, is there anything that is that the select board looked at the list and said, yeah, that we should absolutely do that and we should do it soon. And in my mind, I'm thinking the emergency radio might be something because that would put about fifty-two thousand back in capital stabilization, and about twenty thousand back in free cash, um, and and it would change potentially change the discussion, the capital discussion for this fiscal year, yep. if we made that decision. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, that, um, I would agree with that one. That's a, that's a smart head. Also. But I didn't know if you know if there was anything else similar to that that. Um, you know, some of the things that I had highlighted were the police officer post training, the, the training requirements for police officers that yep. we sort of was a, a mandate. Um, we can equip police officers. This is a lot <laughs> police related, but, you know, they had been looking for a new cruiser. I think those are sort of the, the bigger um, revenue replacements on my list that are not school related. And you get the repeaters on there too, right? In and the repeaters, right. That. Yeah, and those are important, especially as you get up to like north, the north part of town and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and that might be another um, 
you know, way to think about it, if that's something that, that you all would prefer, is n not understanding that we're not going to make detailed decisions now, but hey, we think that the majority of funds should go to uh, our, our police and fire and, um, and schools or, you know, it'll help sort of maybe think right. through this list or help me to think through it. So in categories, categorize yeah. priorities in that sense. Yeah, exactly. But I'll, uh, Tom, to your point, I'll, I'll talk to the other communities and yeah. try and see how quickly um, we can figure out if we can work together <laughs> to, to hire somebody jointly or if not. You know, I, 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 number 36 on the list is pickleball courts. That's a resident suggestion, right? Yes. Yep. And, and and again, I I I personally think that it, when you you look at the amount of people that are using the Riverwalk, I mean, there's always people walking on that. It, and I mean, it can be. It, it can be raining, there's people there. It can be snowing, there's people there. It can be beautiful days, there are people there. I, I just, I, you know, the idea about the kiosk for the, for the kayaks, if, if you have things for people to do in the center of our town, people are going to come. And, and like pickleball court or... I don't even know what pickleball is. It's like... Tennis for older people. Oh, I guess it's because I'm not old. I, 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 and, 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 that, and, that's, and, and Crystal, I'm sorry, that's not actually not even a true statement because everybody plays, I mean, anybody can play pickleball, but it's on a smaller court and it's got a net and it's got wiffle balls. Kind, yeah, and you never and, heard of it in my life. Really? Never. Where have you been? I don't know. Sunderland? Okay, we don't have any pickleball courts, that's <laughs> good, that you wouldn't know. Good point. But but you know and and it's and but we 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 do have a resource back here and and I'd love a band show. A what? A band show. Oh, for bands, yeah. And I mean, I think the library does a wonderful job in their limited area that they have over here. Well, that gets back to like the when we were talking about a pavilion for out here. Yeah. Like used for bands. We talked about that in the yeah. years past, but. So so, but but I, you know, it 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 it'd be interesting to talk, and I know after we after when the library was built, we used to have tennis courts before library, mm -hmm. and then the library. I heard that. Yeah. Well, and, and people may forget, but Didn't they get flooded for skating. Too? They got uh -huh. flooded for skating. We yeah. flooded Ice for skating? skating, and there there was a thing that after the library was built that. We're going to the library was going to rebuild oh, the tennis course. courts, but that's never happened. But um, I mean, gr growing up, I mean, we were always playing tennis and oh, basketball. Yeah. Yep. And you'd always see somebody over there, or quite often somebody over there bouncing a ball. Or right, now Deerfield's the closest like public courts I think that we've got, and those need to be repaired. Yeah. The frontier. So. so but I, I'd love to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But, yep. and again, I, I think, you know, we, we should, we, we know we should kind of prioritize, I would think we should prioritize a school and, and public safety would, would, make, would make sense because most of the time, most of the time, those are areas that... Those are our biggest needs in that sense. And, and Jeff, I, I, would, I would say also that we, uh, at our, our own house here, we have to look at you know, refinishing the floors in the town clerk's office that that hasn't yeah that means it that hasn't been the done front steps and and yes the concrete on the front steps things like the, that the front steps have to be replaced yep so those are things I would like Jeff and I have actually talked about the front steps so yeah yeah we've been talking about those for a while and and I know the radios and the repeaters I mean that's critical to public safety. And, and those, honestly, you don't have to replace those that up. So this is a perfect use for that. You know what I mean? It's a very periodic thing. And, and, and it's a very expensive and, yeah. and... It's a perfect thing to use for this. Right. So 
and and the repeaters are are needed. So. And it's all tied into public safety and everything else. So. You want more yeah. guidance? No, no, but I think you made my point in why I'd like an, an expert because to me, I don't know that pickleball courts, well, I see the value in it and I can make the argument that it will help with economic recovery and health and it, it's good for public. <laughs> I still, I'd, I'd want somebody else to say, yeah, that's an eligible expense. But I think if we look at it as like a grant, a shared grant position. I think we'll all get a lot of bang out of that buck because so much of our stuff now is grant related. When you look at the percentage of the budget that actually is tied to grants, yeah, it's big and it's getting bigger. Yep. And I think we, you know, like us and you know, however, whatever towns want to share it, I think we'd get use out of dealing with this and mm -hmm. then going forwards. So I think on this list, one of the things we want to look at, and I'm not picking on the pickleball court. <laughs> I, I, I'm just. But. We don't want to put too much money into something that now is going to require a lot of maintenance either. Uh, well, exactly. you got to think about that. You know what I mean? So if we're going to go and, and I love the idea of a pavilion or a bandstand or whatever it is, but then there has to be a maintenance budget for uh -huh. that too. Because yep. that's not just a build it and we're done type thing. Right. Because we're trying to get better, but because historically, I mean, this has been like a national problem. We're great at building things, and then we walk away and forget about, oh, well, gee, you know, in 10 years, right. we're going to have to fix it. Right. Because, so like, the tennis courts are a pricey repair once they've right. heaved up enough. You right. Know. And that, that rubbery... Oh, like, yeah. And, and the, the, the track, I mean, it, it's a fantastic thing now. You know? Yes. But, but, you, you, but you, yeah. you know, Jeff, you, you look at, you know, the, some of the things like stockpile adequate PPE for school and all town building. The problem with stockpile and PPE is that it has a life expectancy. It has a life expectancy. Right. Yeah. And, and, you, and, you have, and, and, you, and we, have to, yep. we have to be careful on, on that. Um, <coughs> you know, the, in, in, in on, on, this, on this list, I don't really see anything... You know the tent purchases for clinics. The only the only problem with when you purchase the tents, um, when you get into larger size tents for that kind of work that we're looking at doing, you end up tents have a life expectancy. Yeah, we're probably better for renting though. Is that what it's that? like seven or eight nine years? And right. and I mean that's what the fi the fire Where department found out. Yes, yeah. and then they're not just the cost of the tent. There's a cost to insure it. Yeah. There's liability yeah. if Did you're going to the fire department habitat. Oh no. yes. Well, they used to. Yeah, years ago. Okay. Not they used currently. To, they used to rent it out. Yeah. That, that, that uh, rent association, association. Yes. Because that that was that was one of the thoughts was that it would be primarily for clinics, but if there was, you know, if you weren't allowed in a building, maybe it could be used for an outdoor event or mm. if it. Probably not big enough for like a town meeting, but you could have a, a, like a in-person forum with, you know, or if the library wanted to do something outdoor, like the book sale and have it outside or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. It could be a town resource, but it sounds like the town has tried that before. Well, yeah, well no, it, uh, the, the volunteer, it, the association, the fire, the fire department association had when they rented it out. But the problem is, once it gets, once it got to a certain age, then to get insurance on it. You, because it, it they, they no one would inspect it, no one had insured any longer. The fire return is only good for so many years, and it's going to yeah. be redone. Yeah, you've got so, liability insurance if you set it up someplace and some kid climbs the tent pole and falls through the tent. Yeah, you're liable. Right. So, so it's more there's there more than just the cost of the tent. Yeah. Yep. You know, overhead. and and. And plus, you gotta have people that can go and put it up. Right. That's very true. That okay. was one of the I, problems with the fire yeah, department. There's, there's, I, yeah, there's, I, okay. so most, mostly things. And, and all the other stuff we talked about. So. It's a good start. So like the, the radio upgrades, th now is that in the works being done? To use that money for doing that? Uh, or to replace the money that the town's spending for that? Right. I think that that would be the goal is that we would spend 
this month the ARPA funds on yes. that and then yes absolutely yeah. Yeah. that that should be done right away I agree 100 yeah. percent yeah so so administratively the challenge is I, we don't have to report yet so I don't know what what the reporting requirement is and what they're suggesting is for communities that are receiving not a lot of money we're getting over a million dollars they consider that not a lot of money right um, they are the the federal government and the state are suggesting doing one big project with all your money because it's going to be easier administratively I don't know how much easier I don't know how complicated it's going to be but that's why I've hesitated from saying because it is to me it's a no-brainer we should be spending this money I just how much are you looking at seven hundred thousand million nine hundred thousand yeah so you, they're, they're saying you'd be better off rebuilding the elementary school they're just looking at it from an overhead well, that, but that we can't we can only spend 350 like. on the because ed educational expenses or revenue replacement funds and the only infrastructure we can spend is water wastewater no water sewer and uh, broadband for non-revenue replacement funds yeah. all right so but again if we have somebody who has the time to read the 170 page interim final guidance um, they might say okay. yeah this, you can do lots of small projects so again that's where that or bring somebody to do this well I, I think that that's some, to me that would be but something that I would I would think the cock would help us with the the cock the cock could hire one or two people I, I would think call Linda right I, I mean think about it what I, I mean so are you, are you saying Colerain's going to hire somebody? Is Colerain going to try to do it themselves? Wendell, New Salem, Leverett? And, and that's the other thing is, is that I would say is if you say, hey, we should just be doing this and we'll worry about, the, you know, we have, I think we have until April to file our first report. So we have time to figure out what the final final rule is going to be and if, we, if the reporting requirements don't look that bad and just move forward with what we think is important and we'll deal with the reporting on the back end. Right, good. Yeah. I, mean, we can I would say, look, I, I would look at the, personally, the, I, I would look at the radio, I'm 75,000, I can come back to the town coffers. Mm -hmm. right. yep. That, right? Yeah, I think that's that to me is a, that, the and, and, and the purchase of the replacement firearm, I mean, stuff that we put money to, towards, we should look at first. It wasn't that nine or ten thousand for the firearms. Seven. I think seven. Okay. You know, somewhere up Eight thousand. Uh, yeah. Yep. And again, those are. And and, and but that. but I, I would talk. I would talk. To, I would talk to. I would talk to the FERCOG and ask him, are are they looking into? I, I would call the FERCOG and ask them, are are you, are they looking at offering a program that would help the local communities with the the spending of the money? And yeah, and, and it, it would be revenue neutral for them because we could pay for it. Out we of could the money. we could pay for them out of the money, yep. and and they and they live they live off from grants. They may be able. Yeah. I mean, who would better be able to handle something that than the FERCOG? Wow, they're in a position to. Right. Yep. I'd be curious to see if any other towns have talked on about it. You know, I mean, it, it, right? Right, because we're we're not living okay. in a vacuum. I mean, we're running into the same issues that every yeah. other town's got to have. Yep. All right. Next, all right, ARP it out. <laughs> Thank you. Good, that's a start. Uh, select board updates. Negotiation meeting tomorrow for Union 38. Uh, who? Oh, Sorry. congratulations, Dave. Sorry, well, sort of second. Perfect. Crystal? Nothing since last time we met. Uh, we had a South County EMS meeting last week. Um, Zach, the director, made a presentation. We've been off. We've been offering an impact shift for a couple years now. So basically, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., where 80 something, 86 percent of our calls come in, they've been, and they've been 
having this impact shift. So it ha it's been kind of been filled in by um, John. It's been filled by overtime, right? And you were there, or you were sleeping in the back of the room. Ah, <laughs> okay. So 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 Zach made a proposal to hire two full-time people because it's getting harder to find um, per diems to come in. And the Board of Oversight voted three to one to support Zach's and there was one voted no, that was me because I, I have a hard time changing. Theoretically, we're gonna spend less money with the full-time people than trying to hire the part-time yeah. per diem because of overtime but all the other thing I feel that it should be discussed at a in my opinion something like that needs to be discussed at an annual town meeting not uh, so you were a procedural vote making a point there it is, the but it is but it is yeah. I, I mean okay. because you're you're, cha you're it's changing you're, cha the you're changing the staffing yeah. um, and and you're adding and I just, I, it's hard for me, but when, you know, he, he did the numbers and he should, and, and because now I was not paying overtime, plus we're going to be able to cover more, more, uh, transports and. Yeah. It makes sense. And it, it is probably getting harder and harder to deal with. Per it does. Stuff. Yeah. I and, get that. and, and I, and I, and I can appreciate mm -hmm. it. Mine, mine is a procedural. Thank you. It, it, it is because, yeah. and I said, Zach, why don't we just wait six months and talk about it at annual town meeting? Right. I got voted down three to one, but I'm fine with that. I, 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 I again, you I just right off the point. You know, you we you have to again to me, this should be discussed. Hmm? What change like that? Yeah, I get that. Anyway, so so that that's happening with that. Um, and it looks like uh, now that with the ambulances that we have now, we're getting much better maintenance on them. Um, the Deerfield had an international that was very um, maintenance intensive, and it only could be serviced by one place down in. West Springfield, so every time there was a problem, it had to go to West Springfield, and yeah, I guess so it looks like now that that is better, so um, more dependable. So that that's good. But they got two operation now; it seems to be doing, working out very well. Um, town administrator updates. Yes, so I think the. When we met two weeks ago, I had mentioned we were finishing up interviews for the South County. The search committee was finishing up interviews. We have finished um, the interview process, which is the search committee was made up of the three town administrators from Deerfield, Waitley, and Sunderland, and uh, one of member from the Council on Aging from each community. We recommended three candidates um, to the Board of Oversight and the Deerfield Select Board, who's the hiring authority for the Senior Center. Um, we are working on setting up a joint meeting for interviewing those finalists. Sure, it takes and a long time, doesn't it? It does. It's a lot of, a lot of coordination. I um, but we're, we're hoping to do that. Uh, Sometime in December, pre-holidays. Um, well, all right, you're running out of time. Yes. Yes. So, so, so I got a question. Right now, the senior center is being run out of the uh, uh, the Catholic Church, Pope John Paul II Center. Yes. Okay. But our empl our employees less people we have one less person did you want did you see my email about using <clears throat> senior work off mm -hmm. couldn't we do that we could we could i think that what what i i think we're we're trying to figure out how to 
because I, I think one of the challenges of being at, at the Catholic Church is that there's no storage. There's no storage. There's no phone, so everything has to be brought back and forth. So um, Deerfield is going to have a conversation about, hey, can we, you know, um, bring in a lockable file, uh, not file cabinet, storage cabinet that we can leave some of our material in an out of the way place. Can we, you know, we talked about, can we get the phones forwarded so that they don't have to go, you know, can we get, or messages emailed so that they don't have to go back to, staff doesn't have to go back to the office to check those things. Um, so I, I, I don't think it's an issue well, about If you have a question health. about phones, there's a gentleman that lives right over there, Bruce Weston. He's a phone guru. And if, and if the president of Weston Communication, who happens to be Gail Weston, approves, Bruce can figure that out. He, he's, he, I mean, he, and he's, you can just, I can give you his number. Call him up. I'll see him Wednesday night. I, I, I mean, we don't have to make this thing complicated. Sometimes dealing with the guys across the street, we make things way complicated. We have people that can fix this. Yes. If it's fixable. Uh, it, it, Mr. Weston's a very resourceful gentleman, oh, I, and, I and he, can tell, he would tell us real quick if you can do it. Right. He may have to just go into the box and flip a switch, and voila. And, and he has it fixed. I mean, I have, I have an immense amount of faith that he could find something to do. Uh, as if, a, if at a, Mr. Weston at a very reasonable cost. <laughs> well, you know, right. everybody um, tries to make money. Yep. Yes. So we're we're working on making the operations run as smoothly as possible until we get. But I, you know, I in and, and again, I w I wouldn't hesitate using senior work offs if you need help. Yep. And, and having somebody go over for two hours, you know, a couple times a week for senior work off. I mean, that's what why we have senior work off. So yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that um, I spoke with. Um, we have to have Corey checks. It wasn't Friday. It must have been Wednesday. Yeah. The, um, but you know, um, spoke with the other town administrators and set up a, a regular check in to understand more. Frequently, if there are needs or concerns of the senior center, a more regular check-in um, because there isn't a director, so there yeah. isn't that you know natural line of communication. So hopefully, that will be helpful. Um, the housing survey, looking out into the audience, is due tomorrow. If you haven't filled one out, please do so. Physical copies here, uh, online version as well. Um, or give us a call if you want to fill one out. Um, please do that. The state approved the revals of the properties. Um, so if it's all right with you, we'll do the tax classification hearing with the assessors next Monday. Yeah, good. Um, so everybody understand what that means, right? So that is the um, assessors are going to go through and do the presentation about the tax rate and here are some options for splitting the tax rate if we wanted to do yeah. and typically in in most communities although Hadley did it differently uh, this year changed um, the communities reaffirm their single tax rate which is what Sunderland currently has. You pay the same. But you're just just because you're assessed, our budget can only increase two and a half percent. Right. Our re our revenues. The revenue from property. So you so from property can go up by two and a half percent plus new growth. Right. So basically, so the assessors are going to tell you after the revaluation that we have more our total dollar amount in town is going to be greater than it was what it was which means that the tax rate will probably be going down 
but your so your bills will be based on a lower a lower tax price per thousand dollars of valuation but a higher valuation right. Right. yeah so just so so if you saw that your house went up 12 percent doesn't mean your tax bill is going up 12 percent right it's not right. A, it's not a direct correct yep some that that can be confusing sometimes mm -hmm. yep. so that that's why they couldn't set the tax rate because they needed to know what the total value valuation of the town was once they know what the total valuation is right. then they can set the tax rate yep okay um so uh i got a letter today from the highway superintendent who is recommending the hiring of one thomas p kelly for uh seasonal snow plowing okay motion motion second so we have a nomination of thomas p kelly as a part-time uh employee for the winter season correct all those in favor signify by saying aye aye three zero thank you thomas kelly from russell road hmm? is that tom kelly from russell road no idea i do not know they have to be within a certain radius in order to be able to respond but yeah. um i'm not sure uh, and then the very last thing, which I know is your favorite topic, is we did a walkthrough of the North Main Street project with MassDOT and uh, the contractors. Um, we had some conversations about the rainfall two weeks ago and How'd the that puddles come? that were forming. <sighs> Not because the grass was in this. They said, <laughs> that was mentioned, the, gra the grass hadn't had come in yet. Um, the, the engineers looked at the designs and they said those are lower areas by design. So what we had talked about is current projections are that we're still within the 10% contingency that MassDOT would cover. Mm -hmm. So... Um, George said, and this is not the correct term, maybe one of you knows it, but basically can we put in some lawn drains that connect to the closest thing so that these areas that we know are going to collect water can drain away. Can drain away. Um, so they're looking at doing some of those within the budget, so it's not going to cost us anything. And then um, I think they're going to increase some loam in certain areas because there were some catch basins that just weren't collecting water. So how about, how about the sidewalks that were puddling? The hope is that it, that, that was overflow, but yes, that is... Oh, overflow. The, the sidewalks oh, were supposed to have been pitched so that right. they were drained. Yep. And, and so the, the, at least most of the images that I saw, the sidewalks were part of a larger puddle that included the tree belt. So I, I think the thinking is that they, they're not the lowest area, so that if it, if everything can drain to the, the lawn drains, then the sidewalks won't be an issue. Okay, so. how, about, uh, how about the manhole covers that are low on the street? What are we gonna do about those, just gonna leave them? I have not heard that the contractor has come back with a corrective action plan for that yet. I didn't think so. So we are, we're still waiting for that. Probably want us um, to forget about it. But not a week goes by that I don't hear about the manhole covers from somebody. Oh, I, 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 I would say, if somebody said, I would say, go to Pine Street in Amherst and see how when you drive over there, they just repaved it. Did they? And, and, and you don't go boom every time you hit a manhole cover. Well, how would you like it? Just like that room. So go to Pine Street in Amherst and make it the same. I'm not asking. I, it, it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Built-in speed bumps. Well, some someone would have to take out a <laughs> somebody would have to take out a transit. Yeah. And obviously, no one. 
they must not taught how to taught the project how to use one of those when they did that job. So we are still trying to uh, get the heights determined to make sure that they're you know getting Perfect. their own surveyor. So so we're doing our own on on those heights. Yes, I, I would figure that we would have to. If they want I can help. It's pretty easy how to use. <laughs> Those were my updates. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no. Nope. When I did my garage, my dad, when I brought the transit home, I was shooting the grade. He says, he just, this is off. I go, Dad, it's not off. And there was one thing that was like an eighth inch low. And he said, see, I told you. <laughs> and the only reason he knew it was low was because I went out and bought 30 feet of clear, and I said, all right, the Egyptians did it this way with a lot water level. Is, yep. that, ex is that acceptable? <laughs> uh, fill up your tube. All right, I'll take a motion. I motion we adjourn. What? That was yes. awful quick. I've been waiting. <laughs> Second. Have you been, pra have you been practicing? I've been practicing. Uh, perfect. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn this endeavor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Declare us out at eight ten. We will be back here next week, same place, same time.